there is a secret to ending stigma around contraception, it's creativity. When I embarked on my Global Health Corps Fellowship in Southwest Uganda, I thought I would learn about health docs as a way of addressing uh, family planning. But the greatest lesson was that creativity and, and innovation is the key to smashing stigma around contraception, especially among the youth who might be missed through traditional methods. I will talk to you today about two women whose stories uh, present the dichotomy that still exists when it comes to an unmet need for contraception, a gap that approximately 214 million women still suffer from due to lack of availability of contraceptive methods, lack of awareness, stigma, domestic violence, etc. So as I was supervising adolescent health and establishing youth-friendly services at a local health facility, I came across a young pregnant lady that was sobbing as she sought antenatal care. Fiona was only 15 years old and was impregnated by her own grandfather. She said, I don't want that child. They made me quit school. In a country where abortion is illegal, Fiona was unaware of family planning and emergency contraception. The health system failed her. It bypassed her completely. As a result, she was not able to exercise her right to decide her own future. Another woman I have come across is Patience. Patience is a 19-year-old who wanted to delay having kids as she and her husband were starting a new business that would require basically their full attention. So after hearing about family planning from a women's empowerment group known as Dreams, she went to the facility and she received the services and the counseling that she needs, where she was then able to choose her method of preference. So what's the difference between these two stories? Unfortunately, Fiona not only had to suffer the mental health consequences of domestic violence, she was also a victim of an unmet need for contraception. Remember patients? So patients came to me a month later, interested to know more about the different types of contraceptive methods. So we taught her everything, from how to put a condom on a banana, to knowing the difference between an IUD and an injectable. Later on, health workers at this facility started to notice a drastic increase in the number of youths coming to the facility and seeking family planning services. Young boys and girls, sex workers, it was amazing. So as it turns out, patience was not quite that patient. Her vibrant nature triggered an urgency in her to rush into the community and share that information. How did she do it? She got creative. So, Patience and her husband's new business was a bar. For every drink she sold, she would offer condoms and make it a point to talk about family planning and demonstrate the use of these methods. She broke down misconceptions with her sense of humor, and she also engaged her husband to help her target the men that were reluctant to listen. By listening to her community and by being innovative, Basically, patients used a very effective approach that triggered her customers to go to the health facility and seek those services. Just like her, we can all tap into our creativity and human-centered thinking to design interventions that will work and bridge that gap. If we meet the global need for modern contraception, we will reduce the number of unintended pregnancies by 75%, induced abortions by 74% and maternal deaths by 73%. Whether advocating for family planning at the hair salon or at the policy level, we can all go beyond the traditional methods of approaching this situation. So um, it's funny because Lebanon and Uganda, as different as they are, there are so many issues that are common across both countries. And in Uganda, I noticed that the systems and the interventions that we are using are not really taking into consideration the challenges and the obstacles that are facing these young women. Whether the health facility is too far, whether we're not going very rural, whether the language that we're using is very difficult for them to understand. And I really think that 
if we use this concept of human-centered design and talk to our girls and adolescents and listen to what they have to say and let them come up with the intervention themselves, then this would be a very effective approach. Because we always th we think that if we impose what we know, then it's actually going to work. But context really matters. Um, listening to them and what they're going through really matters. So whether it's gender-based violence, which is very common, whether it's um, this unmet need, this gap of, of contraception. I don't want to have children yet. I'm not using anything um, as a contraceptive method to, to prevent it. You know, so I really feel like we need to actually listen, give them a sense of agency to come up with their own solutions because they are capable and they, they know what they need. You know, so yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I think, you know, the work that you're doing is, is, truly, is truly inspirational. I love what you're doing with Dreams. Um, because not only are you teaching young people that they can still con take control of their lives, but what you're saying to young people is there's hope and, you know, dreams are indeed a possibility. Um, so my question to you is why do you think it's so important to um, think outside of the box when it comes to um, sexual reproductive health and rights? Yeah, which I guess I... Uh I think because as long as we still have girls and women and youth and adolescents not receiving the services when it comes to sexual reproductive health, then there's so much more work to be done. Whether our approach is working, then we need to maybe do more. Whether our approach is not working, then we need to shift. So that's why I feel like if we keep on doing the same thing once and twice and three times, nothing is going to change. As long as we have this Fiona who is impregnated by her own grandfather, then there's something wrong. Either we are not targeting the grandfather or the men, basically. Or we are not targeting Fiona, maybe because she's 15 and we usually go for the um, older ones. So I feel like the fact that there's, there are still people um, that are not being addressed or the, that are not receiving the services that they need, then we should definitely go out of our, like, take a step back, see what's going wrong, what are we doing, and what can we do better.